Imagine if you had immediate access to remedies without needing to make a trip to the grocery store or wait for a prescription to be filled with a price that was more than what you preferred to pay. Or how about just reducing your reliance on all the synthetics found in the store-bought stuff just to treat common ailments? Well, you can, and the how ain't new. It's just been forgotten about among marketing and modernization. Now, I would love having a miniature version of an 18th century apothecary cabinet, rimming with drawers filled with dried herbs and ornate amber glass bottles lining the shelves. But that's not the reality of most people, and in fact, it doesn't take all that to start experiencing the cost and health benefits of keeping one. In this video, I'll show you how to start a simple medical apothecary everyone in your family will enjoy, how to create syrups, capsules, and tinctures that are excellent for treating colds, coughs, and the flu, and share how an apothecary will help you create a foundation for nourishing your body naturally. While stuffing multiple plastic baggies of herbs in a single jar may save space, it falls short in terms of preserving herbs at their best. Herbs are very sensitive to humidity and moisture, and plastic may not provide an airtight seal. This can lead to mold growth or the breakdown of active compounds in the herbs. Some plastics contain chemicals that can leach into the herbs over time, so it's always best to store herbs in containers specifically designed for storage, like glass jars or metal tins in a cool, dark, and dry place. We live in a townhome and space is at a premium, so I had to reconcile the fact that a corner hutch that I was very proud of myself for thrifting for $50 would get far better use as the central spot for my collection of herb jars. Now I did wrestle with the tinge of guilt because my original intention for this hutch was to have it display the collection of china that my husband had purchased during his deployments. They're stunning pieces and I wanted them on display, but the truth is we seldom use them. Repurposing a space and piece of furniture that I already had to serve as my apothecary just made sense. It was the perfect height, location, and size. And so the work of removing a collected hodgepodge of dishes began. We frequently use our antique Marlowe Minton English tea set, which dates back to 1938 and is no longer in production. But some of our other glassware is purely for display and would need to be tucked away. Goodness, I almost forgot about several bottles of honey purchased from several manor houses we visited in the UK a few years ago. It's a good thing raw honey never expires. With the items removed, I wanted to give everything a good wipe down since I couldn't remember the last time I gave this thing a good deep clean. I thought it best that the open portion of the hutch would house our tea set, and I was delighted to find this service set which will not only add a touch of classic elegance, but is also just plain practical for storing your teacups, your pot, and a few accessories. It gives both an excellent presentation while providing organizational support. An apothecary needn't be extravagant, but it is a space that you'll use with frequency. So make it a space that sparks joy and enhances your herbal concoctions. Here are a few delightful accessories that have made a real difference in my medicine making journey. These are items that will likely fill in the gaps with what you already have, or just add to your enjoyment of working with herbs. In addition to a few other tea steepers I already have, I couldn't resist these stainless steel tea strainers with drip bowls and crown pattern handles, which add more of a tea room experience right at home. My usual Usual go-tos are these extra large wash and reuse cotton tea bags, which are excellent for large batches. My previous set lasted for over two years. I also grabbed labels with punctured holes and a large writing space for labeling my jars, and I grabbed a bit of wrapping string. I then decided to get a lighter label set to distinguish between personal items and those I intend to gift. I found this small bag for storing the few jars of essential oils I have. I especially liked its portability and I thought that it would be perfect for travel or even just a quick trip to my kitchen. It stores up to 15 bottles. Since I have about 25 herbs, I wanted to avoid the two-part canning lid and band assembly each time I wanted to access an herb. So I opted for a one-piece wooden lid with a silicone cover, which still provides an airtight seal. I especially enjoy making tinctures, so I purchased a bulk box of amber glass dropper bottles which arrived packaged nicely, including additional wrapping around the nose of the dropper. Oh, this set also came with 24 little funnels. I don't have quart size amounts of every herb and I want to leverage my cabinet space, so I opted to add a few smaller jars that have a lid that has an end in for easy removal and replacement. 
The design of the jar bottom grooves into the top part of the lid and makes them very secure to stack and stand. While you can certainly designate a few existing spoons from your kitchen, I opted for these sturdy and detailed wide and narrow scoops that I'll use to mix and ladle all of my blends. I'll include links for all of the items I've shared in the description box below. To store some of my homemade liquid medicines and syrups, these thrift store bottles will be perfect. All right, now let's get to the work of finally giving these herbs their permanent home. It may not seem like much, but to me, a cabinet stuffed full of dried plants is a way to increase your independence. Now, to be sure, it may not be suited for your worst ailment, but it is a steady hand that you can look to. It's a backup for when supplies are short at the store, and when stored correctly, these plants provide potent amounts of essential vitamins our bodies thrive and survive on. My approach to using herbs is one that largely supports preventative health measures to maintain well-being and support the immune system. However, it's important to use herbs with guidance and consult with a healthcare provider, especially for chronic or serious conditions. My intention in sharing the benefits of a home apothecary is to highlight their utility for everyday use. I am neither an herbalist nor a doctor, and certainly I am grateful for modern medical advancements. I share solely with the intent to lift the traditions that have been used for generations that, in the scope of such an extensive timeline, have only recently started to disappear within the last one to two generations for many. And there you've got it. A modern day apothecary can be as simple or extravagant as you like. I've actually stocked my beginner apothecary with a sampling from each of the major categories that a larger apothecary would feature. These categories include dried herbs, flowers, spices, and teas, solvents used to make things like tinctures and elixirs, which are either alcoholic, vinegar, or glycerin-based, essential oils, which are great in topical treatments like salves or cleaning products, and a few other ingredients like beeswax or Epsom salts used in personal care products. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start living a farm fresh life without land or livestock. Elderberry syrup is delicious enough to savor just on its flavor alone, but as a syrup, it's great for fending off or speed recovery from colds and flus. Its effectiveness has proved to reduce both the severity and duration of colds and flu symptoms, likely due to its density of vitamins and minerals. To prepare the syrup, combine elderberries and water in a sturdy pot, then simmer until the berries soften. Strain alpha pulp, keeping the liquid, and compost the solids. Return the liquid to the pot, add ginger and cloves, and then simmer uncovered until it reduces by half. Measure the resulting juice, add an equal amount of honey, and then mix well. Store this concoction in the refrigerator and use it within 12 weeks. For cold or flu relief, consume one to two tablespoons several times throughout the day. Fire cider is our second go-to anytime a cold or cough starts, and it usually snuffs it right out. Grab a clean jar large enough to hold the quantity of the ingredients we'll chop up. I like to start by slicing the onions and layering them on the bottom, then slicing and dicing the remaining items that you see me using here. Feel free to leave on the skins and leave the seeds in, and don't get hung up on the amounts. Use what you have, because fire cider isn't an exact recipe. It's a vinegar infusion that combines horseradish with root vegetables like ginger, onion, and garlic. Then those ingredients marinate in apple cider vinegar, and hot peppers are added to make it fiery. That's why if I don't have a particular ingredient on hand the moment I make this, I know that I'll have time to stuff it in the jar later. It needs to steep for about a month, and then after that, it reaches full potency. Then you'll remove the solids and stir in some raw honey and store in bottles in the fridge where it will last for up to 18 months. These ingredients are all around immune boosters with antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. You'll take one to two teaspoons daily for a potent punch of immune system support, and then increase that dosage to three times daily to use when treating early symptoms of a cold. Echinacea, a plant native to the areas east of the Rocky Mountains of the United States, activates chemicals in the body that decrease inflammation 
inflammation and increase the body's immune system. It's most commonly used for the common cold. I use a locally crafted spiced rum from my home state, but you need at least 80 proof or 40% alcohol to effectively extract and preserve the plant compounds. I'm using a one to five ratio as recommended in the Herbal Apothecary Guide. This will steep for six weeks and then you'll strain it into a dropper bottle where you'll just take a couple of drops mixed with a cup of water every few hours until your symptoms subside. Let's make another tincture made using osha root, which is excellent at providing respiratory support and relieving symptoms of conditions like bronchitis, asthma, ease coughing, and soothe an irritated throat. To make, place chopped or crushed osha root in a jar. For every ounce of osha root, add five ounces of alcohol. Strain the solids after six weeks and use as needed. Dandelion root tincture provides liver and digestive support, which helps remove toxins from the body. It also helps regulate blood sugar levels. I prefer to create this tincture using apple cider vinegar due to its milder taste. It needs to infuse for at least one month. Take a teaspoon or two of dandelion vinegar before meals and you'll notice the difference. I like to call this next recipe winter health in a jar, but it's really just infused honey garlic. We're in the middle of fall, so my garden is looking kind of scraggly, but I've still got things growing. I love how hearty your cold weather herbs like lemon balm, rosemary, and thyme are. It's a reminder of the strength of these herbs. Even though I'm just a vertical gardener on a deck, I'm always impressed at how much and how often I can harvest from what I like to call my outdoor refrigerator. This recipe is easy. You simply fill a jar with garlic cloves, ginger, and fresher dried herbs. Then pour honey over the garlic and fill the jar. You'll have to do this in batches and use a wooden spoon or chopstick to ensure that the contents are totally covered, which also removes air bubbles. The honey will liquefy over the four to five weeks that you let this steep before straining the solids. When I'm filling off, I'll stir a spoonful of this into hot tea. Ginger and garlic are immune stimulants and are fighters of infection of nearly every kind. These remedies really work, and yes, you can make them yourself. If you've ever eyed any boutique or top shelf tea blends, most of what you're paying for is the pretty packaging and usually they'll fold in bits of dehydrated fruit. Well, why not dive into the joy of making your very own tea blends from scratch? Starting with the basics and working your way up is easier and more rewarding than you might think. Prepping and dehydrating your own fruit is a breeze and you can enjoy custom tea blends anytime you want, experiment with endless combinations, and create unique flavors that suit your mood perfectly without the expense of prepackaged teas. To get the best flavor, stick with dehydrating seasonal fruits, which is why you see me using fall flavors like citrus, pears, and late season berries. In season fruits will infuse your tea with a depth of flavor that store bought teas just can't match. Most herbs dehydrate at a temperature between 95 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit and take two to seven hours depending on factors like humidity, the thickness of the herbs, and the type of dehydrator you're using. But once they're finished, they'll be crisp and ready to store in an airtight container. I like to create fruit and tea herb combinations in pint-sized jars that I can add scoops of loose leaf tea to and steep right in the jar before straining and enjoying. Having pre-assembled jars of mixed fruit and spice blends means that I can come home, set my electric kettle to just the right temperature, and unwind from the day with a ready cup of tea. These pre-assembled jars are also easy to tuck in my work bag or have at the ready for company. I don't know about you, but the combinations you're watching me make like orange cinnamon ginger tea with mulling spices, a mixed berry blend with hibiscus, and a pear orange and goji berry tea are downright delightful. And as you can see, paired with my own bulk tea and herbs will only cost me pennies per cup. To ensure that my teas are truly airtight, I like to use a brake bleeder, which yes, is the tool you use to remove air from brakes, but it also works perfectly with the food saver jar attachment to manually remove air from jars and create an airtight seal. Use the handbrake to pump air out of the jar. You'll feel the resistance and do so until you reach between 20 to 25 PSI. That's it, your vitamin filled fruit will store for months. A wonderful evening beverage I enjoy during the fall and winter is golden milk, which is also known as turmeric milk. To make golden milk, you typically combine milk with ground turmeric and other spices such as black pepper, cinnamon, ginger, and honey for sweetness. 
The medicinal properties of turmeric contain curcumin, which is a compound known for its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, as well as immune support, joint health, and improved sleep quality. And there you've got it. You've seen how I, but truly anyone, can start to build their own home pharmacy. It's convenient and comes at a cost savings that you'll notice almost immediately. And it gives you the satisfying feeling of being prepared as your knowledge about herbal home remedies grows. And even better, you can source a number of these herbs from the pantry that you already have or grow them in your garden. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends. Mm -hmm.